All right, let's start down on um, the ground and we'll start in child's pose today. So modified child's pose, of course, if you want to, especially because if you have your roller, you can always do it with your head on the roller. You can do it with your hips on the roller and your head on the roller simultaneously. You can also do it with your hips on the roller and your head down further. So you can choose as you'd like, as you set up, if you want to use the roller. And of course, you can do pretty much the same things with the blocks. The roller does feel a little bit softer underneath the legs if you want your hips a little higher. All right. So setting up knees slightly wider than hips and maybe even shoulders width. Slide those arms down in front, forehead to the mat. Take a deep breath and exhale. I'm going to encourage you throughout this whole practice as we go to keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Remember, your tongue, really, that's its natural resting spot. That's where we're designed to have our tongue. And when it moves out there or hangs in our mouth, or it's just kind of just, or we have our mouth open, we are actually, our posture then isn't at its best. Our neck can't be at the best spot it needs to be. And then we tend to be out of order in that way. So uh, since we don't chat necessarily while we're doing all these things, um, go ahead and try to keep that tongue at the roof of the mouth and give yourself that, just that, that centering that you're, that an alignment that your body wants. Two more breaths, nice and long, slow and deep. Come up just enough and let's walk the hands to the far right corner. Line the left hand up with that right corner and then the right arm lines up with the left, head down. Getting that nice long opening on the left side without compromising the right side. Big breaths deep into the mid back. Deep into the pelvis. You can feel that pressure into the pelvis. Inhale, come up on that diagonal. Walk the hands over to the left side of the mat. Line the right hand up with the far left corner and sit back into your left, right hips. Head down. Inhale, come up, wash your hands center, take your left hand, reach it through and underneath, reach your right hand overhead, sit back towards your heels, try to stretch the top of that foot out. Feel that deep opening of the underside of the right arm, as well as the back of the left shoulder. Slide the right hand in, and then let's take the, the right hand through the left arm and then drop back towards the shins. Now it's easy to keep those toes curled under, even if your toes are towards the sky. Reach through those feet as well. Get that top of that foot down on to the mat as best you can. Now reflexively, it may just kind of come up, but you want to kind of counter that move a little bit and try to stretch the top of the foot out. Breathe to elongate again the back side of the right arm through the shoulder and then the left arm underneath the left arm. You're going to feel that big pull. Slide your left hand up and in. Bring both hands underneath you. 
curl your toes, sit your body weight back into your heels and round your back into a cat stretch. Inhale, lift the tailbone, lift the chest. Exhale, pull the pelvis and let the head drop from that position. Inhale, lift the tailbone and extend the head. And then again, pull from the pelvis, let the head drop into position. Inhale, lift the tailbone and extend the chest and head once more. Exhale, tuck the pelvis, let the belly pull the body into that C position and then lift the tailbone into that arch. Inhale, round to roll up, step your right foot forward. Back foot is flat for now, sink forward into it, bring that right knee over the toes of the right foot. Even be aware of your foot. Is your foot kind of squished in? Can you open up those toes, kind of like you can open up your fingers? Lift that chest, exhale, round the back, like you're bringing your forehead to your shin. Inhale, lift the chest, sink the back hip in, breathing. Make sure you're coming up and away from that back leg. Exhale and roll back. Inhale and shift forward. Sometimes you can hear my knee pop, exhale. And then inhale, and one more time. Exhale, round back, and inhale, come forward. Let's just tuck that, that back left foot in, roll, and then rotate to the other side. Bringing forward your left foot. Again, you want your, your um, left big toe open. Your other toes open and spread, even position them. Sink into that left foot, that left heel. Feel that stretch in the back of the left calf. And then round like you're bringing your forehead again to your knees. Keep those toes open. Inhale. And then lift that chest up. Exhale and back. Remember those toes in a sense, not as directed and, and efficient as your hands, We'll get a little lazy. Exhale as you roll back. Keep that tongue at the roof of your mouth. Inhale. And exhale. And one more time. Inhale forward. And then exhale again. Pitch that right knee. So now you're in a half kneeling position. So I've got my right knee down and my left knee up. Wasn't that magical? And I want to shift in sideways. Now, of course, if this is bothering your knee at all, put some, fold the mat over and give yourself some more cushion underneath that knee. Breathing, and we're going sideways. Shift in and shift out. So we're deepening into that hip crease and then back out and back in. One more time, in towards your left leg. Take your left hand down and reach your right hand up. Inhale, keep that right hand up, tilt over. Take your left hand up. Keep that left knee nice and high. Reach up and over if you can. Notice my right hand touching with my fingertips. Inhale, come up, breathing. And then just take your left foot under and roll and bring your right knee up. And again, let's shift into that inside of the hip. A little bit different of a opener for that right hip. Breathing. And again, you can bring that knee as far forward towards the toes as you can. And as you have the ability on the back, leg, back knee as well. This could be the limiting factor on the back knee or it could be a limiting factor on the inner part of the thigh. And so don't try to push past it so much. Be aware of it, breathe into it. One more time, sink in, bring your right hand to the ground, bring your left hand nice and high, open that chest, keep that left arm straight up, breathe. Inhale, take your left arm down and right arm up, 
Breathing right arm overhead. Watch that that left foot doesn't cave. Keep your chest high. And then come back up and then down. Take that right foot under, take that left leg out now. So now the left big toe is straight up. You're just gonna go right into a side bend. So big stretch for the lateral side. And then roll as best you can coming over. If you have your blocks, you can have your blocks on the ground. Shift the left knee, come back up, take that right arm up and around, and then take your left knee back in. Let's go right leg out, slide the right hand down, lift the chest, reach up through the left hand, breathe it open. Make sure that left hip is coming forward. You're not sitting back into your left hip or glute. Breathing, circle that left hand around and fold over. Breathing, take your left arm up, reach up and overhead, lengthen. And then coming right back up again. Take that left knee under, I'm gonna turn. You can stay where you are, of course. Breathing, body's nice and tall, chest is lifted. Curl your toes. Sit back to where it's comfortable. If you need to, put your hands on the ground. Pull your knees in. So when you're in a tuck, if you need to, your hands are still on the ground. And then roll your hips up, head down, chin in. Breathing. Just let the body cascade. A little key or secret to lifting the tailbone and getting more length is pulling the belly in a little tighter. Almost like you're trying to take the abdomen off the thighs. Inhale, begin to walk your hands up your shins, pull your sternum forward. Lift that tailbone, lift the chest, press into your shins. And then sweep those arms high up and overhead. Reach. So your hands are really more over your sternum, chest is up. Straighten out both legs. Make sure your weight is in your heels, not your tailbone lifted. Exhale and down. Take your arms up and overhead. And exhale through. Three more times. Make sure that tongue's at the roof of the mouth, mouth closed. Breathe deep, feel that kind of dark inner Darth Vader. Two more, inhale up, exhale down. Last time, inhale up and exhale through. This time we'll inhale up, exhale, bend the knees and dive forward, hands to the ground. Step your feet back, knees back underneath you, and we're back to the beginning. Head down, chin in, exhale. Walk your hands now back towards your shoulders, bring yourself up. Let's bring your feet around. Let's bring that roller and let's go to an upper back position. So we'll start with the roller and just roll back into it. Tuck the pelvis under, circle the arms behind your head, lift your chest, but not arch. And if you can see, when I put my hands behind me, I kind of hold the head with the palm of my hand, but I let my thumbs go down my neck. And I'm actually using my hand to kind of pull my head like I'm pulling it up out of my shoulders. It's not a super hard pull, but I'm using my head almost in my jawline to lengthen my neck away from the roller. 
So again, using my index fingers at the occiput, that bone, essentially your skull, at the base of the neck kind of pulling up. Kind of like you pull up on somebody if you're gonna pull their head up away from their shoulders. Breathing. My thumbs are pretty much underneath my ears on the backside of my jaw, and I'm just elongating. That way I'm not pushing forward, and I'm not letting my head tip back. Elongating that neck, just kind of giving it some encouragement. Take a deep breath, inhale, exhale. Let your body drop over without dumping your head. So your head's still elongated and then tilt the body and breathe into the open wide side. I have myself tipped to the left, I did not say. Open that chest, get long. And I'm just holding this for about three more breaths. So just like we did, in child's pose, kind of that arched position. Now we're more upright. Remember what we can do to the front, we can do to the back side of the body and then bring that the torso center. Make sure that you're in a good position. If you need to readjust your arms, do so. If you need to readjust your hands, do so. Get long in the neck and then tilt. Now watch that you don't move those hips. Keep those hips steady and then tilt to your right or left the other way. And your head is still in line with your sternum as best you can. So you're not moving your head towards your left shoulder, your upper shoulder, and you haven't kept it you know, facing forward either. Breathe open into that outer side. The inner side really is the side that you're kind of compressing slightly. And then inhale back to center. Extend your left leg, bring your right knee into the chest, hold that right knee in. Just give it a nice little tuck. Inhale, take that right leg over, place your right hand behind your head and just let your right knee drop over. So I'm holding my head in this position, just getting a nice, it shouldn't be very, the hardest part about this is holding your head up. You won't get a big stretch, but you still are getting a, a rotation in your right hip. And then bring that right knee center, switch hands, extend your right leg, bring your left knee into your chest, hug that knee in. You can keep that right knee bent if you'd like. Inhale, left hand behind your head. Right hand, leg is out, left knee goes across the body. Left knee back to center, bring your right knee in, left knee in, a little tuck. Lower your right foot, let's lift the hips up and shift them all the way as much as you can. So you can stack those hips. You want your left hip stacked right over your right. And then you're gonna move the roller to basically the center of your chest or bra line, and then slide that top arm, or sorry, your right arm, the lower arm over. Now, for some of you, this is a little sensitive on those ribs. Big deep breath, I'm not gonna stay here very long. Take your top arm over your head. Big deep breath, and then we're going to hunch. Shh. Pulling the rib cage back. Then that might be quite tender. Take a deep breath in again. Exhale, pull that top arm. Shh. Release the top arm, roll towards the mat. So you're hanging forward towards the mat. Head is on your hands, and you're getting just a rotation supported by the roller. Hips in one direction, bodies in another. Let the left side. So you're rolled towards your right, but you are on the middle of your ribs, but you may feel more tenderness on your right rib wall. You can bring yourself out of that if that's too much tenderness or come back in. So you are kind of on your liver line.
bring yourself up, roll to your back to level, take your top arm over your head and just find that stretch. And then take your top arm, use your bottom arm to take you up. Let's switch to the other side. No real easy way to do that other than to just do it. And again, you wanna line up the roller with about the center of the chest, kind of lower bra line, breathing, hips are stacked. So it's not underneath your armpit and it's nowhere near your belly your, or your floating ribs. The floating ribs would be below where the sternum is. So you don't want those back ribs. Those are pretty sensitive ribs. So you wanna line that up. And again, extend the bottom arm, let your head drop. If you're having a hard time breathing because the roller's too far high up into your armpit, or if it's too low, you're gonna feel very off balance over. So from here, take your top arm overhead, hold the upper part of the elbow and pull. Take a deep breath. We're going to come into a little cat stretch. Big breath, exhale. Big deep breath in again, exhale. Inhale again, exhale and roll yourself towards the ground. So you're perpendicular essentially to that roller. You don't really want the roller on the breast tissue because that just is tender typically. And you're just folding. The knees can be 90 degrees or parallel to the side of the roller. My torso is perpendicular. And just let yourself hang forward. Supported roll. Breathe and bring yourself up. Rotate over. And then using this here, you can hold your ribs, but you're not putting too much pressure. Take that top arm overhead, reach, lift up out of your lower shoulder. It can be further over if you want or further under if you want as well. Breathing. Circle that top arm up, use your bottom arm to press you up. And then let's come on to all fours. Taking your forearms, just walk the roller out, head down between your arms, stretching that upper back, extend back and roll back into the top of the foot. If that's not available for you, of course, you can just go to a curled toe, but you're rocking forward. There's no real movement of your arms other than as a writer, you're rocking from your hips. Arms stay, thumbs up. You're not shrugging your shoulders. You're not pulling your shoulders. Your shoulders are going for the ride. Your hips are doing the motion. Big deep breath. Let yourself settle in. Tongue against the roof of your mouth. Rock back, roll yourself up to cat position. Hands on the roller, toes curled under, breathing round and lift and lengthen the chest. Exhale, pull the belly in round. Inhale, lift the tailbone, lift the chest. Exhale, pull the belly into round. One more time, inhale, lift the tailbone. Last time, pull the belly into round. And inhale, lift the tailbone. Good. From here, let's take the roller to the outside edge of your mat. And we're going to bring our leg up onto that. So bring your chin parallel to the line of right over the top of the roller. And then you're going to roll into that roller and roll back. So remember when we were upright and we were moving sideways to get the inner thigh of that rolling position, you want to kind of roll in. My hips are more stacked here. And then I drop in and I roll toward the roller. The roller is going to go in my inner thigh and then back to my knee. And I kind of pull my right hand up 
just so I can have more range, more movement. But you can just kind of roll on those hips as well without moving your arm. But if I roll, so now my hips are stacked, I get some mobility out of my hip and my left shoulder. And one more time, and a little bit of nice rolling on that inner thigh. Not that that's super nice. And then come up one more time. We're gonna take that roller and we're just gonna let that leg settle for just a minute, a moment. You can have a pillow out of your hands, breathe and you can extend and flex the foot, a little shearing. And just let the foot drop onto the roller and just settle there for a second. I like this internal hip opener because we don't get into the inside of the hips a lot. We try to stretch the outer part of the hip and we sometimes can neglect the inner part of the thigh as well. Inhale up and then roll yourself off. Let's go to the other side. Again, you can just flip over or move the roller. I'll move all the way so you can see the setup a little bit better. So again, start on your, I'm now on my right side. My hips are essentially stacked here. I'm just gonna take my left knee over the roller so it's down the middle of the roller and then begin to roll and roll back. So we do a kind of a, a roll position in melt where this is more um, di at a diagonal, but this one, is just getting more motion into the shoulder and getting that kind of that, that um, internal external position a little bit more um, connected to. And a little bit of core here to be real honest. One more time, and who doesn't love that of course? And then come back and hold. Again, shin straight down the roller. And then just let yourself settle into a pillow of your hands, however you like that, on your chin or on your forehead. Big deep breath. Relax that leg so the hip wants to open. Breathe and you can extend and curl that heel in, that leg in and out little shearing on the inner thigh. One more time. And then rest. And then let's come all the way off. We're just gonna come straight off the roller and then come into a sphinx position. Breathe. I'm gonna bring my roller up in front and just hold that sphinx position and nod. So you can sometimes feel like very often we have tight foot, you know, our foot is tight in this position. Well, remember we're one long line and wherever our veins go, our, our and arteries for that matter, our um, lymph goes, and that's moving tissue out of the body. That's all kind of working, that's breaking down, which is fine. And then also we have a nerve line. And when we nod our head, we're, flossing that nerve line. Flossing just in a sense, like when you move floss between your teeth. So we're moving that nerve, that big nerve that goes all the way through the line of the body. So sometimes this can bother your foot just by doing this because it's pulling on that nerve. So make some motions with that foot. You can extend and flex at the same time. Lift the head, curl the toes, point the toes, curl the head. And this can help with that movement of that nerve instead of just pinning one side down. And then pause. Let's take that roller, place your fist or your, your the knife side of your hand on the roller, keep your elbows on the ground, and then just take the roller straight out and shrug your shoulders in. Your head will come up. 
reach your arm out and exhale in. And in Pilates, which we're not necessarily doing, this would be known as a swan. I'm not exactly sure what swan does this, but this is one of those motions that's named for its length of the neck, I think. Not necessarily what the animal looks like. And then lift up. And then one more time. Reach out and lift up. Bend the elbows. And then let's move and bring the knees underneath and come back up. Bring the feet out in front. And let's get the hips onto the top of the roller. And roll back. So sometimes it's nice to do different and to end it differently. So very often we start, especially if we're doing a roller work, we start on, on the, the back with the roller going straight up and down the back. And sometimes it's nice to, to finish with that. So today we're gonna finish with that, even though this wasn't necessarily prescribed to do today. Um, I was still gonna do some hip opener work and all that, but didn't know that we were gonna use this, which is perfectly fine. It's great to incorporate another tool. Bring your right knee into your chest. Just give it a nice little pull without letting the weight go of your left foot. Breathing. So just like when your head was up on the roller, you're not gonna take your head off right now because it's too much load for your neck really to pull your head off the ground in this inverted position. Breathing, extend that right leg up and just kind of feel this kind of H position or push that heel up, sink the right hip down. The left leg is staying very active. Make sure that the roller is below the kind of the navel line or at the iliac crest or below. The iliac crest is the front of the pelvis here. Breathing, press up and get that full elongation of that right leg. And then tip that right big toe towards the navel. And then let's tip the right foot across the midline until you get that beautiful leg up the outside of the leg. And this is where I really feel we can start understanding that our body is fully connected. When you drop that toe, you get more stretch out of that right thigh or right calf up into your right hip. And you may even feel it up further up the body. If we kept going, you may feel it into your hip or it kind of starts getting kind of bunchy in muscles. And then bring that foot center and then let's just roll the ankle. And I was reading a book, I'm kind of going over some new anatomy stuff and not like new anatomy, but one of the points that they really do make is that these muscles we always thought are just individual muscles, bend your right knee, put it on the ground and let's bring the left knee into the chest, hug it in. You know, so often our muscles were always thought of as like one muscle that ends in isolation from another muscle. And really, the more we study the body, the more scientists really look at it, the more biologists, physiologists, anatomists, all this stuff, pull in, press with your right foot into the ground, extend your left heel up, pull that big toe, sink that hip. We really do see how it's one joined system of movement instead of just pieces of muscle that don't interact really with the other. And I know that seems in some ways obvious because partly because I talk about it a lot, but in other ways, it just is hard to imagine how all these muscles work together, how they're all interconnected and where they don't have direct interaction always with each other in, a, in the same way that we might think of direct interaction. Press up, sink down, slight tilt of the tailbone, Drop that left big toe towards the navel, big stretch on the outside of the leg, and then take that outside of the leg over the midline of the body, not to the ground, because you'll lose the stretch actually, and just until you find that length coming to the outside of that left hip. Breathe. I actually love this stretch because it takes the ankle through its range of motion breathing and the outer hip as well as the calf. Roll the left ankle, 
Let's bring both knees into your chest. Let the roller move away from your body and your knees into your belly. Ideally, your feet are pretty much even with each other. Exhale. If you can, extend both legs. So both legs are now over my head, almost like a V position. And then almost think of tilting your tailbone still. So we're getting some length. Remember, tilt is length. Breathing. Tuck is contraction. So shortening. And then bend the knees. Breathing. And then let's drop the right foot to the ground and then the left foot to the ground. Bring the hips up just enough to lower the roller so the legs roll over the roller and just kind of soften the body. After you can feel inside that deep inner thigh joint here, you will joint through here. You want to touch the outer part of your hips. You can feel sometimes one is a little bit more tender than the other. You can feel the bundles, you can feel the little ligaments. Remember, you're allowed to 100% to kind of investigate and just kind of palpate your own body. It's okay that you know what you feel like. Don't be afraid of it. Breathing. Good. Just let your hands rest on your belly. Take a deep breath in. Tongue to the roof of your mouth. Exhale. Pick up your feet, move the roller down more towards your knees. Changes the position of the back side of your legs. The legs may feel more free to roll out. Pick up the legs, roll the roller down to the ankles, and then cross your right ankle towards the left side of the roller. Elongating that right leg. My left knee is bent. It just allows for that slight arcing. And then once more, switch sides. Take that left leg over your right. My right knee is bent. My left leg is straight. So a little bit more arcing. And unlace both legs, let the arms drop. Just a couple of deep breaths. Just let yourself hang. Slightly dangling over the roller, just kind of an ease yawning. <laughs> Big breath. Walk your feet in so your shins are vertical. Shift your hips to one side. Lift an arm and roll towards the lower arm. Use your top hand, bring yourself up. Let's sit on top of the roller since we have it. A little christening for a next roller. I'll put in the comments that you'll need a roller for this practice or that you can use a block if you want to. Just let your legs kind of tuck in underneath you. Knees down if you can on the ground. Breathing, lift that chest. Let the chin.